All right, all right, Knights of Apollo, what is up, guys? Welcome back to the battlefield. My Spartans here are ready to go. Uh, so, yeah, this is Rome 2, and this is a 2 versus 2 siege battle. But this is no ordinary 2 versus 2 siege battle. This is a tournament battle. So, I have joined my French friend here, Ruvac, who, uh, who's been teaching me French. He's been doing a very bad job. No, I <laughs> just... Ruvac, I know you're watching. I'm just kidding, all right? You're doing a great job. Anyways, we, uh, we decided to join the tournament, because why not? Uh, 2v2 tournament. It's hosted by Marketable Skills. So I have a link to the tournament Discord and his uh, Twitch. I believe he streams on Twitch. A lot of people are broadcasting the battles and uh, streaming the battles live. So you'll find all that information on the Discord. It's all linked down in the uh, video description so check it out so this battle is very important right now for us so let me break down I'll try to do this really crystal clear and really quick so you understand like why this battle is so important and how the the tournament the the tournament the tournament is functioning so a bunch of players a bunch of teams so teams of two have joined the tournament and I think it was like 24 or something teams. They've divided the teams up into divisions of six to five players. Once you are placed in your grouping or division, you have to play every team in that group at least once. Uh, now, they don't do it based on wins or losses. So the top two teams of the division moves on to the playoffs. So it's pretty tough, right? I mean, you got to be the top two out of six teams. It's it's pretty tough. Anyways, it's not based on wins or losses, but rather points. So for example, on attack, say you're attacking and you win, you get three points. If you're on defense and you win, you get two points. But there's more. Each faction is worth different different amount of points based on how good the faction is so again in this example i believe I, I i could be mistaken but this is basically how it works i believe pontus and parthia are both plus one factions so if this team here wins this attack they'll get the three points for winning and plus two more because of their faction selection so that will be a total of five points if we look at our team uh i'm going as sparta which is a zero point so it's neutral it doesn't affect it at all so they're a zero point faction and then my ally ruvac he's playing rocks roxalandi roxalandi however you pronounce it they're a plus three faction so because they're not very good in siege environments so if we win here we'll get the two points for winning plus zero because i'm sparta and then plus three so we'll get five points here now at the current point of this tournament this is our third match and a match consists of both attacking and defending we lost the first match outright now to be fair we took on the best team in our grouping so it was not a pretty sight but it was a humbling experience the second matchup we lost by the skin of our teeth. We we clearly lost on defense, but on attack, we nearly won. And unfortunately, we lost. So we, at, at, at this point, have zero points. Well, not quite. Because we actually attacked before this defense. So in this matchup, we attacked uh, the same map, right? We, we chose to attack first. And we went as um, Pontus and I played as Bactria. So Pontus is a plus one and Bactria, I believe, is a zero. So we attacked and we won. I don't remember what they were defending as, but we won the attack. So that was our first victory in the tournament. And we gained because um, we were overall were plus one based on factions. And then we won the attack. So we got four points right there. So at this point of the tournament, we have four points to our name. And we got uh, one you know, one victory. We were one in four at this point in the tournament. But it doesn't matter about wins or losses. But if we want any chance of entering the playoff, we're kind of doing a bit of a, I call this the Hail, Hail Mary, right? This is our, in terms of like American football, it's kind of like the last ditch effort. This is our last ditch effort. And we have to go with big time points. So we have to pick factions that can rack up a lot of points, which means we're going to have to play as the crappy factions and, um, you know, try to compete uh, with uh, against our opponents. So we are... Uh, 
we're fighting for our lives here to try to make it into the playoffs. And that is why we're going with this very bizarre and very interesting um, team of Spartans and Roxalandi. So hopefully that explains it. Hopefully it's not too confusing. I'm going to, after this matchup, because I don't want to spoil it who wins here. Um, it's a great match, win or lose. It's it's fantastic. But uh, after the matchup, I'll show you the standings in the tournament and maybe you'll get a better idea of how this all works anyways let's go back to normal speed so uh this is our big point um big point opportunity now if we win this because we won the attack we got uh we got four points from winning the attack right well now in attacking's harder so that's why we didn't go for like plus three factions we just went with plus one and then a neutral faction we got our four points now we're going for the big points on defense because it's a little bit easier on defense and the whole plan here and if we win we'll get a total of nine points so we go from zero to nine points if we can win this and that's because uh we're using the really crappy faction here of roxalandi they're crappy on on siege battles so uh the plan here it's just straight up hammer and anvil uh, Sparta is the anvil and Roxalandi or whatever you pronounce it is gonna be the hammer Okay, so we are in and this is what Ruvac is, you know He's he's pretty good at handling Cav. So he's like, you know what? I'm gonna go out with Cav I'm gonna sally out and you're just gonna have to hold with Sparta by yourself So that is the plan we are going for this big time hold and I'm actually going to uh, I'm going to do some editing here to where they actually push up and try to attack the walls, and you'll see how this unravels. All right, guys. So the enemy has. Oh yeah, here they go. They're using their artillery. Try to soften up our troops. They do get some good hits here, unfortunately. But the enemy has advanced. You can see they're much closer now. They are taking their sweet time. Now I originally. This is pretty funny. I originally was going to destroy this tower. And I saw him coming over, and I'm thinking, oh, he's going to quickly capture it with this hillman because this is like a throwaway, throwaway unit. So I was like, oh, crap. Okay. And then I see that he's destroying it himself, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, sure, that, that works because, I, again, I'm, I have no plan to hold over here because the reason I'm holding back is because it's just two choke points. This choke point I can hold with one unit, this one with two units. And I don't have a lot of troops. You know, I I have to try to make it it's basically straight up Thermopylae for my Spartans here because uh, I am outnumbered and also I'm taking on Parthia, which is like Persia, so straight up Thermopylae in this battle. Uh, but yeah, I I've, I've got my weakest troops on the front line, the Perioki uh, hoplites. And I'm letting them burn this. I'm like, yeah, that works because I don't even, I'm not even gonna hold it. Now I, uh, yeah, I didn't mean to fire there with my archers. I got some slave art, hell out archers. Uh, but I am gonna try to hold on to these towers. That's for sure. Now over here, uh, Ruvac has pushed his cav all the way on the flank. If the flank, all the way on the flank, they're behind the enemy, and they actually left their artillery undefended. And I'm fairly certain they still have ammo in their artillery. Uh, he also makes a play for the archers. He might have been able to get them if he kept committing, uh, but he decides to back away. It would have been a tough call because there's a lot of cav over here that could easily kill his cav. Would have been a big problem. But anyways, he goes for the artillery, takes out the artillery. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm not sure if they still had ammo. I'm pretty sure they did though. They didn't use that much ammo, so that's a that's a big win right there. We don't have to worry about ammo. And now the enemy is starting to approach. I move up my Spartans a little bit closer. I'm trying not to give them too much ground. And now he's going to move up the Hillman. And look at that. He's now in range of the machine gun turrets. Now he gets a good volley there. Only really kills one guy. But, you know, he has a family too. So that's kind of tragic. Uh, but they're going to hold their ground and fight off the Hillman. And so the battle begins. Now, we were either planning on, well, this might sound pretty obvious, but we were either planning on winning by destroying their entire army or time. I was more thinking that the only way we were going to win this is through time. The thing that's really good about the Spartans is that they're tough to kill and they can hold choke points like no other. So that was the plan, right? I mean, we could win based of time because they that's the time is in our advantage. They have an hour to go um, or an hour to take the city. 
So we're, we're trying to make different plays like that. He's got some skirmish. This is Pontic, some horse skirmishers. They're a close range skirmish. They got Javis. So he's moving them up. Moving them up. He's going to try to get some good damage here on, on the uh, the horse archers who are in circle formation. So nice little, nice volley there. Uh, they return the fire, the fire, and then Ruvak's going to actually pursue them just to try to quickly get them off the battlefield. But they are fast. They are very, look at them. They are extremely fast. So they're just zooming around and they're tough to get. They are getting in range of our towers. So that's good. And look how scared they are right now. Look at this. They form pretty much, uh, and I don't mean this to uh, like bad talk our, our opponents. I, I refer to this only because it's kind of what it's called. It's a noob box. Now this is a new box is really good against a cav army so this is a smart play they're just trying to protect all their fl you know their flank of their army and i'm trying not to give up too much ground because and now i'm forming a, a, a phalanx formation because they're throwing projectiles at me it's not a pretty sight guys i mean As you come on. we are taking a beating right now from those projectiles that's going to be a real problem because the spartans do not have projectiles so we kind of just have to sit there and take it anyways i'm trying not to give up too much ground because it's going to be a big cluster for our our opponents if this is all that they can push forward in because i assume they would want to push in forward really aggressively to make the cav useless the fact that he's still out in the open makes the cav a big threat so we've got them right where we want them this is just perfect. I've sent up another unit of uh, oof, of hoplites, Pirioki hoplites. That's my first, my front line defense. I'm mostly bringing Spartan hoplites, but I'm saving them later in the battle. I want the Pirioki to, to absorb most of the uh, projectile fire. You know what I mean? Just like this. And it's rough. It's rough, guys. It's, I mean, there's not much I can do. I'm just kind of, I, I fell back this unit. I'm just trying to prevent as much death from from afar as possible i do have some spartan hoplites now so already my first unit of infantry is toast but you know it's been about 15 20 minutes so we we are burning some time so not bad at all and ruvac over here he's being patient and that's exactly what you have to do with this cav type army you don't want to force engagements because you'll lose a lot of cav and you'll send them into their deaths so he's being very patient he's waiting for an opportunity he's waiting for a hole or an opening where he could he could uh, charge and get some kills on the archers or whatever so i decide to fall back here this is actually ruvac's call he was like hey hey fall back you know but in a french accent <laughs> Hey, fall back. You know, that's he's French. He's, he knows the thing. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> I'm only kidding. The French are awesome. Uh, but yeah, so I, I go ahead and do that. It's a smart play because it's creating distance between us and the archers over here. That's the other big threat for us is the amount of archers they have. Because I, well, there's horse archers, right? He's got his horse archers. But horse archers, I mean, they're big targets, right? They're on horses. So it's kind of up to my or my archers alone to win the archer engagements. So, so far so good. He destroyed one unit of hoplites. I'm going to keep holding. And this is, I cannot fall back anymore. This is where I have to make my stand. Because we need the arrow towers activated. And we also, you know, if they, they can take control of these and use them against us. And if we lose this, they can push up here. They can push up here. They can go around here. So we have to hold here and here. There's no there's no falling back. This is it. This is this is the edge of the cliff, so to, so to speak. Backs to the wall. There's no falling back. So the Spartan Hoplites get in position and prepare to hold against the... Uh, the Persians, the Parthians. And now um, we got some cav play going on. I think they actually, yeah, they caught out the skirmish cav from Pontus and they quickly took care of them. I'm not really sure why our opponent charged in like that, but he did and we took care of them. And now there's some archers out of position. You see this? But he's not going to, well, he might actually, I think he's thinking about setting up because there's a bit of a hill here that he could use against us. And Ruvak's gonna go for it. Nope, no, nope, never mind. See, he's being smart. He's being patient. Unfortunately, over here, he's gonna take a mouthful of arrows. Is that? Does that make sense? A mouthful of arrows? Whatever. 
You get what I'm saying. Mouth sounds weird. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Said that. Anyways. <laughs> Sorry. It's late at night. I feel like I'm slurring my words. Anyways. I noticed that the enemy... Oh, very good play here. I noticed the enemies doing this tactic where you can get your troops on the walls and then send them around because it's a little way to sneak around troops. So I decided to put my troops up on here to kind of prepare for that. And then they're shooting at my guys. And my guys' backs are kind of exposed to the arrows, so I decide to fall back even more. But I go ahead and get my archers activated as well. Or at least I will soon. Uh, but I got some Helot archers close by. I see that he's moved up some of his Persian or Parthian foot archers. I keep calling them Persians, but, you know, whatever. Tomato, tomato, right? Or whatever they say. Uh, but Parthian foot archers are moving up. So now is the time to start shooting at them. And I'm saving my archer ammo purely for archers. I'm, I'm not going to waste any ammo on infantry. Got to kill the archers here. Now, he moves up his archers on the wall here to shoot at the calf because... Uh, we do have some skirmish cab from Ruvac that's supporting my infantry. Really good hit and run tactics. Uh, but he decides not to stay long here. He gets a volley off. But good on him. But he's not going to stay here for long because his backs are going to be exposed to my arrows. So he, he decides to fall back. But he's got a huge clumping of archers over here. Notice how they're overlapping. That's a big no-no because it makes it an easier target for my archers. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my archers ready to go. I'm moving them forward. Kind of using the buildings here as a bit of cover. And uh, there we go. And my archers are better. I got the Cretan archers. So they should win here as long as they just get firing. They are outnumbered though, so that's a problem. My Spartan Hoplites still holding like champs. They have a, over 100 men still. So they're still just, you know, holding holding their ground, doing their thing, doing a Spart just doing Spartan things, just doing Spartan things. Over here on this side, I'm really surprised by this from our opponents here. I'm surprised that they're not attacking. Um, I would have thought to at least if I was them, I would I would be full on attacking like right now because I'd be taking this ground and I would be trying. See, here's the problem. He tried to rush in his archers to get a foothold, but 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 because he did that, a lot of his archers are dying to my archers. So I'm actually winning this archer engagement. The only archers that are breaking for me are the weak archers, the hell out archers. And I I'm actually going to be able to save them by retreating them. Hey, as long as you have archers alive, you got ammo, right? You're still going to rack up good kills, even if it's you know this unit's like more than halfway dead, but they still can inflict some damage. So keeping keeping them alive is important. You can see, look at that, look at that. They keep trying to come in, but my archers are just zoning them out. Blocking them out with arrows from death from above. Now he is holding he, with this uh, square formation. He is holding uh, with thorough spears, which I always mispronounce, but thoroughs, thero, whatever. Uh, the spears where they have a lot of projectiles. Now this is really awesome for us because these spears would be devastating up here but the fact that he's keeping them to watch the rear against ruvac that does wonders absolutely does wonders now he's cycling in and out troops to try to keep them fresh uh but my spartans look at they're just holding their ground and they're always fresh they've been training for this since they were 12 i don't know spartans man it's a weird culture but, uh, yeah, they're doing a good job. They're doing a good job. They're holding. They're breaking units. Uh, really, it's the, the turrets that, or the, the arrow towers that are, are helping us out. Uh, I do have a reserve Spartan Hoplite unit over here. Again, just watching in case they try to flank around, which I thought he was going to there. But uh, he decided to just charge in two units at a time. And so we hold. And again, Ruvex just chilling back here. There's not much he can do. He does have some cav units inside the city ready to support me if there's any opportunity. Looks like he... Oh, did he get a charge there? Do we miss it? Oh, I think we did. He did charge the enemy. You can see some of his dead cav. He charged the enemy. I don't know how many kills he got. Um, I don't know how effective it was. But hey, we're just kind of poking and, and probing the enemy and saying, hey, you can't sit there. And it did work. They, they fell back. Look at that. They're falling back. They're pushing up some archers again. These are eastern skirmishers. A big threat to my hoplites. And uh, he's going to go ahead and retreat them. Every time. Every time, guys. 
they sent up archers, I was watching like a hawk. Every time they sent them up here, I told my archers to fire. As soon as they fell back here, I held fire because it's a much harder target and I didn't want to waste my ammo. But yeah, we're still holding. I got a fresh unit of Pirioki Hoplites. Oh, I have Pirioki Hoplites? I thought I, I thought I used them up all. I used all of them up. Sorry. Uh, but that's okay. They're going to just sit in reserve. And notice he is sitting back here trying to use his javies. That's the classic column formation where they throw their javies. That's okay. It, we're hot. We're Spartans. We're gonna take project. We're gonna take projectiles. We just gotta use our big shields. All right. So I'm just constantly checking because Ruvac does make some plays here, and I don't want to miss it because it's so lightning fast. But look at this. I mean, we've got. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Now he's charging in again. That was pretty cool. So I actually form. Oh, we kind of miss it there. But it was so, oh, dang it, I wish we saw it. Anyways, a nice charge there with the Cav. And they are actually doing some good work against this infantry. Not killing as much as it looks. They're more just knocking them down. But they have killed about 20 of them. And it's shock Cav, so you kind of want to go in and out. In and out, in and out. So anyways, anyways, what was cool is I had my Spartans like this. And then Ruvak was like, hey, move your guys. Make a path. And then I, I moved them out of the way. And then he charged through the gap. It just, it looked cool. It looked really cool. So now I'm going to move up again. Make sure he doesn't put any pressure. My archers are moving up because they were going after some of his archers that pushed forward. Once again, we're still holding over here. Again, I'm so surprised that our opponents are not pushing over here. And man, these matches are so intense. When you do tournament matches, it's a whole nother ball game. A whole nother ball game. It's very uh, strategic and surgical, I guess, is how you could say. How you could say it, huh? I don't know. But uh, it's intense. So we're, I mean, I'm just sitting here like, okay, we're doing it, we're doing, because the whole time I'm just thinking, I don't know, I doubt we're gonna win. You know, like that's what I'm thinking in my head. I doubt we're gonna win, but it, it's a Hail Mary. This is It's do or die. We either win here or we don't make the playoffs. Like, if we want any chance of making the playoffs, it's right here, right now. We can't just barely win and get a couple points. We have to go for a lot of points because we lost our first two matches. You know, we didn't get any points for the first two matches. We could have gotten some points, but we barely lost that one battle. It was a real bummer. Anyways, we're holding, our, we're holding the best we can. We're doing the best we can. So far, so good. A lot of time has gone by. You know, a lot of time has gone by, and I'm feeling good about it. I'm like, okay, okay. Again, in my mind, I'm going for time. I'm not going for kills. I'm not going to destroy the entire army. Just going for time. And uh, I know this might not be the most exciting of gameplay here because we're just holding two choke points. But, man, I, I, I when we were playing this battle live, whoo, whoo, mama. I mean, like, every decision... You thought it was like chess. You know when you play chess and every move you make, you try to think about what all the counter moves could be? It's like that, but with every single unit. You know, that's just every... You're trying to, you're trying to predict what your opponent's going to do, and it's absolutely tough. I move in the Pirioki Hoplites. I'm getting them ready because my Spartan Hoplites, they finally break. But they did well. They held for a long time, and that's all I request of them. Yeah, show them how real men fight. Okay, so here's the problem, guys. Here's the good news for us. And by the way, I retreated a bunch of my units because he's throwing projectiles at them. So I was like, yeah, screw it. I'm going to wait until he starts moving up, and then I'm going to move up. Um, but here's the, here's the good news. We're starting to whittle away at their infantry, which means they need to start sending in reserves. That means they're going to start moving their defensive units here to the front line, which might give Ruvac an opportunity to strike. But he's playing it smart. He's waiting, waiting, not forcing any fights, waiting until he has the advantage, and then he's going to go in. Here we go. I form. So at this point, I form um, failing formation because he is throwing projectiles at me. See, like that. Ugh. And it stings, guys. But, you know, I'm actually... Really glad I had this extra unit of Pirioki Hoplites because I don't, you know, they're not as important as the Hoplites or the Spartan Hoplites. So for them to get tossed at, you know, for them to take the brunt of that Javi throw, hey, that, that works, that works. But I'm going to go ahead and send up some Spartan Hoplites to support. 
support the infantry here because there is a bit of a gap and I don't want them to abuse that. So I'm going to go ahead and cover that up, secure it. So now I've got two units of uh, infantry here. Not ideal, but I got to secure, secure the front. So now Ruvak is going to move up his uh, archer cab. This is actually really good here. This is what's so nice. They're like dragoons, right? They can move and shoot, move and shoot. So he's going to move up this horse archer unit and get some good flanking fire. He's going to go for the units like this unit here where their sides are exposed. So that's a good play right there with the uh, horse archers. Very nice play. Very nice. Very nice. So, again, totally shocked. Totally shocked that they're not pushing over here. Again, maybe they're worried. Maybe they think they'll lose too much infantry. I'm not sure. Maybe they think they can skirmish down and whittle, whittle down this side. It's kind of like the opposite, right? We're kind of doing the same thing, both the defense and attack. What I mean by that is that we're trying to whittle down these troops so it makes an opening here. Maybe that's what they're doing too. They're trying to whittle down these troops so it makes an opening here. That could be the case, but I've got plenty of reserves at this point of the battle. Actually, I shouldn't say plenty. I've got... I'm saving my heroes of Sparta. These are like my best units. I'm saving them for the very end. They look so cool too. Look at these guys. Yes, yes. So I only have one of them because I went with more of a cheaper army because I needed the numbers, right? Like the Spartan army can get expensive. And I went with more of a um, middle ground between quality and quantity. Yes, so I don't know what I was doing here. I was, I think I was trying to get this unit out of here. And then I noticed that they were breaking. So I was like, screw it, just send them in. Because sometimes with Spartans, when they start breaking, and if you can get them reorganized, they stop breaking like that. Just, you know, so they secure their flank and they're, they're doing okay. I'm also going to move my general, which is a royal Spartan unit. Which actually, I think the Royal Spartans are better than the hero, Sp Sparta of Heroes or whatever. Nice little charge there. I don't think it really helps. He kind of just ran down most of my men. But, you know, Ruvak's trying to help me. And what I'm doing here with my general is I'm using abilities. So I'm getting, yep, there we go. I do second, uh, second hand smoke. No, it's a uh, second win, uh, which gives them energy again because they're, well, they're fresh now. And then I use battle rhythm with the other unit. Again, just doing everything I can to keep these guys alive and getting some kills. Still nothing from um, from Ruvak here. Uh, looking for an opportunity. Again, that's how you play it, guys. It's how you play it. Uh, basically, I'm the meat grinder. And yeah, I, you know, I think I forgot to mention this. Uh, this is just... This is the ultimate hammer and anvil strategy, right? The Spartans are the anvil and Roxalandi or whatever you pronounce it are the, the hammer. I mean, this is just the ultimate hammer and anvil. But it's going well, guys. I mean, the towers are just perfect. They're doing so much damage. And, you know, I think it's really good that Ruvak took out this artillery when he did because they did still have ammo and they could have gone for trying to destroy the towers which uh would have been pretty detrimental detrimental to us I'm trying to use bigger vocabs or diverse vocab anyways we've got some cab moving in now this is actually pretty promising because less cab out in the open makes it better for ruvac right and now he's also pushing up archers and once again, as soon as I saw the archers move up, I let loose hell. I told my archers to fire at will, and we need to... Because look how blobbed up. This is a perfect time to fire at them. But of course, the players, the, our opponents are going to try to spread out. And here we go. They're finally attacking over here. And my Spartan Hoplites go total goblin mode and are not listening. I did not tell them to do that. I told them to form a line here. And unfortunately... Oh, nice play with the... Uh, I think those are the thorough spears. He's going after my archers, so I got to retreat them out of there. So yeah, I'm just kind of holding, and he tries to charge through. Yeah, that yeah, that's not gonna that's not gonna work. So um, we got to have better communication. Every time he wants to charge through, I need to get out of the way, because hot the Spartans are like a wall. You're not gonna break through. There we go. I reinforce with Spartan hoplites over on this side. And at this point, guys, I mean, I'm starting to run out of reserves. I've got some Spartan uh, hoplites. I've got my general. And I've got the heroes of Sparta way back there, keeping them fresh. 
So at this point, oh wait, no, I got two units of Spartan Hoplite. So I've got three or four units of reserve. And you can see that more and more infantry are coming to the front line and it's causing troops over here to have to pull away from the fight. And the fighting over here is going well. There we go, there we go. Now he got through, he got through. So what he's doing here is he's going through my men. He's gonna hit these guys. And then he's gonna come back and hit these men. He's just pinballing around, using his, his faction the way he should. And, and at this point, when I saw Ruvak doing this, I thought, hey, maybe there is a chance. Because look at the balance of power. It's not looking good. And I forgot to mention this, but if you can, if you just remember where you are in the video, go back to the beginning of the video. It looks like this. Maybe even a little worse in terms of balance of power. Uh, but yeah, he's going to go ahead and push through my men. Um... I think the rule is that you can push through units that are half health uh, or half strength, if I'm not mistaken, and they, they are half strength, um, probably less than half strength. So I think that was that was fine, I, I believe. <laughs> I, I believe we're not cheating. Uh, but Spartan Hoplite's holding the line here, doing just fine. In fact, I think we're gonna win this. It says combat's even, and for this unit, losing decisively, but I think that's gonna change over time thanks to the arrow towers. Once again, still no move here, waiting for the perfect opportunity. Again, him just putting a patient presence here is a strategy. It's causing all these men to sit back instead of being towards the front. I saw that he moved, he 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 advanced his general, and I, I assume he's doing that because he's trying to use some abilities to keep his men in the fight. And naturally, I'm going to shoot him with everything I have. If I could kill their general with archers right now, uh, it would be perfect, but he uses his ability and he's gonna fall back or actually no He kind of sit, sits here for a little while Even if I don't kill him. I'm weakening him general cav units are very good And look at we almost got him down to 60 men. So he almost lost 20 men right there More infantry coming to the front line ready to support I've got some Pirioki hoplites. These guys have been here since the very beginning of the battle. They're starting to uh, They're starting to die because they were already weak from all the projectile fire from the beginning. But I do have a unit of Spartan Hoplites ready to support. My general is still over here. He's still using his abilities whenever they're ready to be used again. Attack! We're in Phalanx formation. The enemy has fallen back. Look at the death. The amount of death in front of my Hoplites. So awesome. Now I move out of the way and he's going to go in for a charge. Look at that. See how we did that? We've done that a couple times, but that was the first time we actually saw it. <laughs> uh, but he, the charge, though, unfortunately, wasn't that great. And I'm going to go ahead and form up again so the enemy doesn't get us by surprise here. And then over this way, we're just chilling. He breaks through my Pirioki Hoplites. Now my Spartan Hoplites are ready to hold. Don't really like the placement of these hoplites, but I was too afraid to move them because I didn't want them to get charged as they fell back. It would have been cool if they had a mechanic in Rome 2 where you could like step backwards looking towards the enemy, if you know what I mean. And now I've got my other Pirioki hoplites holding against the enemy, and there's a little gap. There's a little gap right there for my ally to charge into the so it kinda works. But he just comes in and he's helping me out fight off these uh, Pontic Swordsmen. Still holding over here. But my troops are starting to dwindle here. Who would have thought a two choke point battle would be so intense? Hoplite's still holding, but I am getting concerned about their numbers. They're down to 73. And I do have a unit of reserve. Hoplites, Spartan Hoplites. I am thinking about sending them over here, but I am concerned about this choke point here. I have sh now shifted my general over to this side to start using his abilities on these units. And I'm making sure he's behind the buildings just in case no archer fire gets him. And this is such a great map too. Our opponents actually selected this map. The way it works is that there's a set, um, there's certain maps for each week of the tournament, and we didn't even know the maps. 
So we, so the way it works is that you get a coin toss, and wh whoever wins the coin toss can decide whether if they want to defend or attack first. We said attack first, and it's because we didn't know the maps, so we're like, I don't know, let's let them decide. And they actually picked this map, so I actually got out of the way there for him to do a cab charge. I think he's going to do it again. Kind of. But we're starting to break over here. Not a good sign. I'm shifting over some Spartan Hoplites to reinforce it. And look at There is a little bit of a gap here. It's becoming a problem. Where's my general? Where did I... A uh, uh, general? Oh, the general's over here. I sent both my general and the extra Hoplite. So I'm going all in here. I send the general in. Oh, by the way, holding the center... Oh, those are Spartan Hoplites. Where's my heroes? Oh, here comes the Spartan heroes. All right. <laughs> my Spartan heroes are moving forward because they're going to help out and try to kill these guys. Now, Spartan heroes, even though they're Hoplites, they can rack up a lot of kills. They are a great killing unit. So they need, they need to get in there and secure, secure that gap because I, my Hoplites are flanked. This is not good. Oh, and he charges in. So at this point, Ruvak was kind of experimenting here a little bit with his shock cap. He wanted to see how much damage he could do to these Thoreau Spears. And he's actually breaking them, guys. He's breaking a unit. So it, he's doing good damage. Now, I don't know if he's going to completely break them. He kind of has to keep them in the fight if he wants to completely break them. But the balance of power is still not looking good. And I was I was surprised at this point in the fight. I was like, come on. Like, we're, we're breaking units. And here we go. Here's a flank. But right at the last moment, I can say, Ruvak, charge the flank. Charge the flank. Go in there, Ruvak. And I shift out of the way. And he goes for it. I try to get out because I don't want to slow down his charge. And he gets a great charge on a unit that was not prepared for the charge. was not able to form shield wall. And it's absolutely vital we get around these lines because then he can hammer an anvil. He can get behind and do some good strikes. Unfortunately, over here, I've got some archers breaking, but they're out of ammo. And the good news is that our opponent was still shooting them, even though they're out of ammo. So they're basically a non-threat. So having them kind of waste ammo in that unit was perfect. Uh, at this point, I am starting to run low on ammo. So I'm just kind of using it sparingly. And there we go. He's going to fall back out of there with his cab. I'm going <clears> to <throat> plug the gap. Unfortunately, I left the unit in an awkward position where their flank is exposed towards the enemy. So I probably need to correct that soon. And I'm sorry if I'm flying all over the place with the camera. I'm just trying to cover everything because there's a lot of moving pieces to this strategy. Even though it doesn't seem like it. At least for me. Oh, nice job, dude. So we're holding, we're fighting back, we're doing what we do best as, as Spartans. Hold. Now over here we got a cab charge. He's, they're now experimenting with their cab as well, trying to break through with cab charges. Because why? They're running out of infantry. All their infantry is now placed in here. And Ruvak is like, I don't know, he's like, you ever see uh, Bugs Life? <laughs> This is such a weird analogy. You ever seen Bugs Life and they have that crazy grasshopper that they've got chained up because he's a madman? That's Ruvak right now. And as soon as these men, as soon as this army fully commits to going into the city, he's going to charge. He's going to charge like a crazy, cr a crazy grasshopper. So there we go. We're holding. I'm reforming my lines. I've got my heroes of Sparta. They're in the mix. They've only lost a few troops, and they're going to start racking up kills. They already have 49, 51 kills. Uh, my Spartan Hoplites on this side are starting to dwindle, though. They're down to 53 men. They're getting hit with arrows, but unfortunately, I'm starting to run out of arrows, so I can't really silence his archers. My general's nearby. I'm using most of my abilities on this flank unit to keep them in the fight. And there we go. We are breaking some of his archers. I am shooting at these guys with what left, what with what arrows I have left. All right, all right, we're doing it, guys. We're doing it. Hold, hold, hold. And looking at the timer, there's 11 minutes left, basically, in the fight. So we have to hold for 
It, it's getting down to I don't know the time exactly because this is the time of the replay But it's it's starting to get to the point where they need to start going or they're not gonna have enough time to take it all My heroes of Sparta have uh, pushed back one unit. They send in another My heroes of Sparta unfortunately are winded We're gonna keep holding here Spartan hoplites hold your ground all right, so I decided to move my general into the fight. I even shift over a unit of depleted Spartan hoplites who were holding over here. I noticed that he was not committing a lot to this fight, so I said, hey, you know what? I'm just going to hold it with one unit of my healthiest unit. They still have 137 left. So I decided to send over um, my depleted unit over to this front to support this unit here that's about to break. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about the too much drawling. And again... We wait. Again, we wait. Or more Ruvac waits. He's just like, you know, he's like a he's like a a big cat in a zoo. You know how they're in their uh you know their little exhibits and they, they hate it and they're pacing it's really sad, but they're pacing back and forth. That's him right now. Just or that scene in Star Wars when they have the stupid like those weird like psh, psh, psh. you know the first one <laughs> you know psh, psh. does that explain it really well you know when uh Qui-Gon Jinn is fighting Darth Maul and they've got the like the walls and that's that's basically you know he's just sitting there waiting waiting for the walls to go down and as soon as they do they're ah, they're gonna charge in now there are they are retreating their cav here I've got my infantry ready to go here we are holding. Oh, look at this. I got it. I get out of the way. He's not paying attention. I think he does form shield wall here, but nonetheless, that's a bad move by them because what, what's going to happen is they're going to flank. I told Ruvak, I was like, hit these guys in the back because my infantry needs to support. I'm going to go ahead and plug the gap again. And basically, I think Ruvak's just going all in here. And he's got another unit ready to go. This was so cool. I didn't show a lot of a lot of the times it happening, but it was so cool to kind of move my army out of the way and then he charges in. It just creates this really. It's just so organized. I don't know. It just something you'd see from good players, and we're not good players. <laughs> no offense to our opposing team that you know from because we beat them in the first round, but you know I think uh, I think we just got lucky. Um. But yeah, uh, so Ruvak has sent up his cav in the mix as well because I think he actually charged his general over here and we were trying to go after him. But it's starting to get bad for their reserves. It's getting to the point where they got to make a decision. Either make this a smaller area to defend or just rush in here and try to get your troops in this opening area. Here we go. They're now pushing over on this side. They've got their general charging in as well. And this is, what, uh, this is when I was like, Ruvak! Ruvak, send in your cav. His general's here. We can kill him. And I've got some archers in reserve. I don't know if he was trying to go for the archers, but they don't have any ammo, so I don't really care if they die. No offense, Cretan archers, but you're kind of useless without ammo. Don't tell him I said that. But um, I told my hoplites to specifically go after these royal, royal cataphracts because if we can kill the generals, it's like chopping the head off the snake. The head killing, chopping, the decapitating the snake head. You get what I'm saying. No leadership means they break. The Pontic swordsmen fighting on this far flank. You can see that they've really backed away. I think what they're doing is resting their men. Because you're not going to beat the Spartans head to head tired. But when they rest, my troops rest. So it's a win-win. A win-win for us. Well, a win-lose for them, I guess. Whatever, you get what I'm saying. Here comes some cab charging out. He's going to try to get these guys by surprise. And he's desperate. He wants to silence those horse archers. We got a counter charge, and he's going to probably close in from the other units. Yep, there he goes. He's going to try to get rid of this cab. Now he's making a... Well, no, he's just sending everything in. Oh, yeah. These uh, noble horse. Are they noble horse? Yeah, noble blood cab. They're going to get destroyed. And now he's pushing up his cab. Look at He's going to charge these spears head on. Apply directly to the head. Head on. And, uh, you know, that's a great way to deal with these spears because they don't have time to throw their projectiles. Great charging going on here. Their lines are crumbling. 
But we are fighting for our lives over here. I sent in my archers to support these uh, Spartans to just put more bodies in the front line. Over on this front, the fight is really picking up. We've got Ruvak sending in some Cav just to support. Again, just to throw extra bodies into the fight. We're trying to hold for dear life. We are fighting for dear life, guys. I mean, it's absolutely crunch time. My general is going to have to be uh, thrown in the fight pretty soon, but he's a Spartan general. It's what he wants. He's been. He's like, come on, put me in, coach. I want to kill. I want to die. All right, so, and it, the Spartans, that, that wasn't... YouTube, it was a Spartan reference. Spartans, like, look forward to dying in battle, okay? It's not what you think it is, YouTube, all right? All right, but yeah, they're gonna... Uh, my center is starting to break. My heroes of Sparta, they're down to 70 men. They're still a threat, but starting to be a little overwhelming, and that's when I send in my general. And I'm, I'm surprised that these hoplites are still holding here. 31 men, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. But here goes my... This is my... And remember, this is... And I support him with some archers out of ammo. But this Spartan unit is my best unit. So, here we go. All or nothing. They're fresh. They're eager. Ready to mingle. Single, ready to mingle. And it, it, yeah. So, they're ready to go in. My Spartans are holding over here. Guys, the balance of power still isn't looking good. It still doesn't look good. After everything we've been through, which was really shocking. I thought for sure... I. Uh, looking at the balance of power, is like, oh, this is over. There's no way we can win. We got to kill generals or something. And Ruvak has done a great job of using his cav and picking off the enemy. And he's gotten some good kills on certain units. He's now got his general engaged in the fight as well. So generals are thrown into the fight. I think... I... Th no, no, we haven't killed their generals. Now we have the royal cataphracts over on this front. They're active. So they're not perfectly fresh, but active is still pretty good. And this is where Ruvek's like, bro, just charge in. I'm like, all right, let's do it. Charge in. I'm not going to sit here and let these guys freshen up. Okay? I tell my, my general to form phalanx because they're throwing stuff at us. And I'm like, what do we do? We just charge. Charge like true Spartans. Charge, charge, charge. There we go. This is it. Do or die. And right away, we see some breaking. Look at that. And that's such a promising side. There's a gap over here. Ruvak takes advantage of it. He charges in his cab. He's destroying their archers. The balance of power is finally shifting ever so slightly in more into our favor. But it's still... Oh, and it's going... Watch it. It's growing like a snake. Or it's growing like... I don't know. Nice little charge in the rear of these thorough spears. Takes them out. That's what we needed. Well done. We got a lot of units breaking to the might of the Spartans and the hammer and anviling of the Roxa, Roxa, Roxa Oni, Roxa Loni, however you pronounce it. His general is mixed in here uh, with all, it's a big chaos. It's just chaos. Ruvax charging in. He's like, this is it. This is it. This is our moment. Charge. Charge. So um, I'm like, okay, okay. Okay, I, I was afraid to abandon this post here because it's going to leave an opening where he can send his cav around. But I didn't want to leave his general to fight alone, so I go ahead and charge in my spears. And spears are really good against cav. So I'm charging in, dang it. I'm charging in. Oh, what a cataphract charge. Now over on this side, Ruvax like, you got to send units down this way. So I've got a couple units... That I'm rushing in. I'm, tr I'm going for the general. I'm going for the general. We got to take out the generals. The balance of power is still in their favor. We got to take out the generals if we want to win this. Ruvak retreats his general because he's chasing um, the um, Parthia's general. Uh, but he's getting pelted by arrows thanks to the gate. But my nothing's blocking these guys. We've committed everything to the fight. They're going to now run down here and potentially charge the rear of my troops. I'm very concerned about it. My hoplites are in the mix over here. I'm just stabbing. I'm stabbing and going crazy. Just trying to kill as, many, as much cav as possible. Yes, come on down. Over on this front, we've got some archers being run down by Ruvek. we got some cav waiting in reserve. He does have a unit kind of watching the rear. So good on him. 
and now I'm charging in everything. Oh, we're killing the general, guys. The balance of power is still in their favor. I don't know how, but it is, but it's much closer. And so, uh, <laughs> we're, I'm feeling really good at this point because I notice our opponent is going for a cap victory. What that means is that they're desperate. They are desperate for another way to win, which is by capt capturing the uh, victory point. I want to go ahead and clear out this infantry. I want to get them out of here. And once we do, I'm going to send my general, or maybe I go ahead and send my general now. Well, no, I don't. I don't. I changed my mind because the reasoning for that is because I want it, I don't want my army to be... I don't want it to be destroyed piecemeal. Kind of like what I'm doing to Pontus. I want them to be together and so they can support each other. So I go ahead and send them into the fight so we can break these guys. And sure enough, the presence of my general charging the rear of the enemy makes them waver. Over on this front, Ruvak is just going in. He's going in. He charged in his cab. I've got my infantry supporting him. We've got some units over here. The balance of power is finally in our favor, guys. Finally in our favor. The units are now breaking. And guys, we did it. We did it. All right. So that was the fight. And right there, we just gained five points. All right. Five points for that victory because Ruvak played as the plus three faction. And I played as the plus zero faction, which is Sparta. The reasoning here was like, hey, we need to go with a somewhat... We needed to go as a faction that could hold choke points. There's no better faction than Sparta. So, um, it just worked like a plan. It worked like a dime. Now, I think in terms of what our opponents could have done better, I think they were just too passive. I think if they were more aggressive, maybe like have less of a force outside, get more in here... Because eventually it would have ran out of arrows. I, you know, if he used his... Potentially, if he used his thorough spears on my infantry, I would have been done for. But, hey, it paid off. And that slingshot us. So, let me just end the replay. Yeah, yeah. End it. Look at the results. So, Ruvak, um, he got 1,800 kills. I got 1,700. We pretty much both carried our weight. Um, but, I mean, considering the kill uh, KD... I mean, like, his, he only had 1,200 troops. I had 2,300. But, yeah, that was a hell of a fight. You can see my Spartans, a nice, pretty much even spread here. A Heroes of Sparta, 217. Hey, props to my Perioki Hoplites. They got a decent amount of kills. This one almost got 100, and they held. My Archers did fantastic, and my General, hey, hey, hey yeah, giggity. My General did fantastic there. Uh, so big, uh, big props to our opponent, Boss Prophet and uh, Gun Dog. I think Boss also has a Twitch. I'll link it as well. I think he recorded himself playing this battle live, or our entire matchup live, where you can also watch our attack against them, um, which was a lot of fun and very close as well. Uh, so yeah, don't forget, guys. Uh, check out the Discord. Uh, it's linked in the video description, and I want to show you our current standing. So here's all the teams in the current standing. Some teams have finished up all their matches. We actually play our last match today. So when you're watching this, I'm probably battling it out. If you're watching it as soon as it comes out, um, so right now, if you look, I think it's the this. I, I can't see it myself but you guys can see it the second place team the i think the scythe the scythe uh scythe team uh they are at 13 points so we need to try to knock they we lost to them we lost to both games so that was the team we nearly beat on attack uh but unfortunately they beat us twice so the only way to beat them is that we have to do this again the next team we're playing is uh finland own or sweden owns finland or something like that uh they now, I don't know. They could have just had a lot of bad luck, but they have done the worst. So maybe uh, maybe we can pull off. Again, I'm not hating on the players or anything, but it's not like we're playing the best team in the division. So maybe, just maybe, we can pull off enough points to slingshot us to second place, which would be hilarious because we would knock the team that beat us twice uh, out of second <laughs> Uh, if we can actually pull this off, that's why I like this whole point system. It, you got to get creative and yeah, we'll see if we can do it. That's going to wrap it up guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time on the battlefield.